Hey guys, this is Colt Cabana, and today I'm reading the audiobook for Pain, a poetry book by WWE tag team, the authors of Pain, Akam and Rezar, edited by Paul Ellering and published by Super Collider Press. No portion of this book may be reproduced in any form, print or electronic without prior written consent from the authors and Super Collider Press. Authors of Pain are copyright 2016 World Wrestling Entertainment used without permission. All trademark and copyright contained in this work are owned by their respective trademark and copyright holders. All characters and character names are the copyrighted and trademark materials of the respective companies that created them. Super Collider Press, Acom, Razar, and any other individuals or organizations involved in the production of this book are not affiliated in any way with any of the organizations that are mentioned herein. I can't stress this enough. This is an unauthorized parody. With that out of the way, here is Pain by the Authors of Pain. Forward. As a professional wrestling manager, I've toured the world of some of the greatest teams to ever step foot inside the squared circle, but few people know of my true passion, discovering and fostering strong literary talent. You won't find stronger writers than Akum and Rezar, my authors of pain. I remember when I discovered them as clear as yesterday. It was the summer of 2015. The Steiner brothers, the Dudley boys, Heidenreich and I had just finished our pre-show writer's circle. Just as Scott Steiner finished sharing his thoughts on Shakespeare's lesser works, two of the largest men I'd ever seen entered the locker room. I assumed with their shaved bald heads and black tank tops they were sent by my rival Jim Cornette to rough me up, but that was not the case. They were there because they wanted to read us poetry. The following minutes were filled with an impassioned, poetic performance of what ended up being an early version of their seminal work, My Vest Has Many Pockets, which is included in this collection. From the first meaningful words that came out of their massive mouths, I knew that I would become their manager, and with their size, obvious wit, and with my guidance, they could become a literary and professional wrestling force not seen since the Road Warriors wrote the first draft of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It is with great pride that I present to you The Book of Pain by the Authors of Pain, Paul Ellering. Dedication. This book is dedicated to our manager, editor, Uncle Dad, Paul Ellering. And now, the poems. I cry when Daddy calls me Hawk. I cried today. Daddy called me Hawk. My brother cried today. Daddy called him animal. Does he know us? Does he know us? I cried today. Daddy said, oh, what a rush. My brother cried today. Daddy said, well, but you know, like how Hawk used to say it. Does he know us? Does he know us? From over the mantle, the road warriors stare at us. From the refrigerator, the Legion of Doom mocks us. Daddy says, one day you'll be champions like them. One day? One day? Does he know us? Does he know us? I cried today. Rezar cried today. We cried today. We will always be second best. Does he know us? Does he love us? Oh, what a emptiness in our heart. Allen Ginsberg's Howl by the authors of pain. We saw the best gimmicks of our generation destroyed by call-ups, starving, hysterical, dragging themselves through the third hour of Raw looking for a crowd reaction, solid workers burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the people that they had in full sail. Your Baileys, your Bankses, your Callistos, your Zanes, your American Alphas and Apollo Cruises, guys who got over on their own who bared their bodies on takeovers only to be brought up to get lost in the shuffle on SmackDown or worse, main event, or do pointless jobs between the purple ropes of 205 Live. What sphinx with balls the size of grapefruits brought them up to the main roster and ate up their catchphrases and imagination. Vince, Stephanie, filth, ugliness, ash cans and unattainable network subscriptions. Children screaming, let's go, Roman, Roman sucks, Vince, Vince, nightmare of Vince, Vince the loveless, mental Vince, Vince the heavy judger of men, Vince who doesn't believe in managers anymore even though we got over with one, Paul Ellering, 
The Authors of Pain are with you at the Performance Center. We are with you in Toronto when we won the Dusty Tag Classic and you were suspended above the ring in a shark cage where you must have felt very strange since you are a man and not a shark. We are with you in Chicago where we won our ladder match that was really good, better than anyone expected. It wasn't as good as a Young Bucks match, but those guys are on a completely different level than anyone else. We are with you when we got brought up to the main roster, where you will cut our promos and we will feud with the Hardys or Cesaro and Sheamus, maybe. We could work well with them. Paul Ellering, we are with you at Mania. Unless they break us up as a team after three months of start and stop pushes and we're just some random guys in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal at Mania 34. Fuck. That's what's going to happen, isn't it? Authors of Pain. Co-authors in life. When you're beaten and weary and you don't know where to go, tag your partner. When gold is on the line, tag your partner. When a cloudy day gets you down, tag your partner. When Paul Ellering confuses you for the Legion of Doom, cry. Then tag your partner. When a jabroni tests your metal, tag your partner. When your favorite show makes you sad, tag your partner. When you can't find your keys, tag your partner. When you feel a nice summer breeze, tag your partner. When you just can't even, tag your partner. When you miss your friend Steven, tag your partner. When the world beats you down, Tag your partner when the squared circle proves unforgiving. Tag your partner when you don't know what to do next. Tag your partner and all will be okay. But don't forget to hold the tag rope. Akum's Razor. We are Akum and Razor, the authors of pain, which leads to the question, what's in a name? To answer this riddle we think you will find, it helps to examine some habits of mind. The names Akam and Rezar may ring a bell to those who have studied philosophy well. The term Akam's razor is a good rule of thought. Simplicity is good, complexity is not. The brain is a weird and peculiar thing from which a lot of ideas can spring. But all things considered, it pays to recall, the best ideas are not naughty at all. In technical terms, it's the law of parsimony, a heuristic tool for logical harmony, But such big words seem overly complex for guys like us who slam and suplex. Named for William of Ockham, a logician of note, the razor helps thinkers keep true thoughts afloat. When faced with two options, one simple, one fraught, Ockham's razor suggests that the former be thought. Why is the sky blue? Who truly screwed Brett? Why are we with Paul and not Jim Cornette? Apply Ockham's razor when seeking the truth and a sufficient answer you surely will sleuth. Vince screwed Brett, it wasn't a work. We paired with Ellering, cause Cornette's a jerk. Why's the sky blue? We haven't a clue. But a straightforward answer is probably true. We're Akam and Razor, the authors of pain. And now you can see what's in a name. One question remains, but the answer's uncertain. When will we move up from jerking the curtain? Virginia Woolf had a great finisher. Virginia Woolf had a great finisher. Finishers can make you. Finishers can break you. Finishers can make you eat cake because, bro, you need carbs. If I'm ever sad about my finisher, like, is the crowd still going for this? I think about Virginia Woolf and how she killed herself by putting rocks in her pockets and walking into the River Ouse. Slow and deliberate, unimaginable, she had a great finisher. The most brutal I can conceive. So I guess death is always an option if I fail as a wrestler. JK, I'm going to live forever. JK, 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 JK. Hashtag Coors Banquet. Red thighs. DIY. Oh, DIY. Why do you slap your legs all the time? When you walk down the aisle and enter the ring, from start to finish in every little thing, did a bug bite you? Or is an itch right there? Your leg falling asleep, or is it an ingrown hair? You look so silly in your little dick tights, showing no real emotion in any of your fights. But rest assured, when you go for a springboard spear, I can hear the slap echoing in my ears. We defeat you every time for the belts. But are you limping from us or your self-inflicted leg welts? Psycho killer Johnny Wrestling, how you hurt our brains. 
for this simple question drives us insane. We have the straps of gold, but you have your red thighs, the very same color of our tear-drained eyes. Big Trophy by Rezar. One, two, three, pin. One step closer. One, two, three, pin. Another step closer. One, two, three, pin. Just one more step to go. One, two, three, pin. Give me that big trophy. Big trophy, big trophy, so tall and shiny. Big trophy, big trophy. You light up my life. Big trophy, big trophy. I dream about holding you from the smaller trophy on top down to your boots and plaque. Big trophy. You are big boots to fill. Big trophy boots. Dusty's boots. Can I wear these boots? Can I wear these boots? Can I wear these boots? No. They are chrome dipped, injected, molded polycarbonate. They will not bend. They will not fit my feet. I cannot wear the big trophy's boots. Big trophy, big trophy, apple of my eye. Big trophy, big trophy. Not a day goes by that I don't wake up screaming, big trophy, big trophy. Haiku from the Road by Rezar. Southeast Loop, April 13th through 19th, 2017. Orlando, Florida to Concord, North Carolina. 552 miles. Paul is driving first. Rental with broken windows. Acom had Arby's. Speed limit only. Acom farts. Paul is laughing. Linked in while I cry. Stop in Savannah. Stop car. Air out Cadillac. Why Arby's, Acom? Now I drive the car. Paul and Acom want Arby's. We drive in silence. Concord, North Carolina to Spartanburg, South Carolina, 97 miles. Yes, new rental car. I forgive Paul and Acom. Golden Corral time. Why eat cheese, Acom? Paul, encourage behavior. Why, 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 why? Spartanburg, South Carolina to Atlanta, Georgia, 180 miles. New rule, no lactose. Razar pick sushi buffet. Razar eat healthy. Razar make mistake. Emodium, not act fast. Oh, cruel karma. Sears for three new pants. Pay enterprise cleaning fee. Paul and Acom laugh. Atlanta, Georgia to Orlando, Florida, 439 miles. How show loop is done. Paul, Acom drive. Eat Arby's. Razar fly. No farts. WWE crash cage playset. Thrash, bash, smash, crash. Crash? No, cash. Cold, hard cash to be spent on toys. LJN, Hasbro, Jack's Pacific, Mattel. Mattel? No, Matt Hell. My body broken in Matt Hell to sell you toys. Watch me crash into the ring so you will want to buy the ring. Watch my brother launched into the cage so you will want to buy the cage. I am a big toy made to sell little toys. I am killed in this cage to sell you little cages. I am flesh and blood poured into a mold until I wear out. WWE Crash Cage Playset. Playset? No, pain set. But who is the one playing? My vest has many pockets. My vest has many pockets. It keeps me safe. My vest has many pockets. I can keep precious things close. My vest has many pockets. When I run, they sag and shake. My vest has many pockets. I look scary with my spooky mask. My vest has many pockets. What could I keep in them? My vest has many pockets so I can hold a secret. My vest has many pockets. Only I know where the car keys are. My vest has many pockets so I can keep old fortune cookies. My vest has many pockets, but I don't let them get holes. My vest has many pockets, but only one is filled with fudge. My vest has many pockets. I look scary like a big fisherman. My vest has many pockets, but I wrestle without it. My vest has many pockets. My possessions are my heart. My vest has many pockets, always afraid because I fear myself. My vest has many pockets. It keeps me safe. Channeling My Inner Conflict by Rezar. With input from Akum, terror abounds. The droning notes of an ominous dirge. They fill the arena, the divine meeting place of the teeming masses. When the gods weep 
and our foes have been ground to dust underneath our gargantuan boots. They see their fate on those big old screens. Which, if we're being honest, it's a little much, right? Paul has shown us much of what we know and channeled our rage, our conflict, and led us to unimaginable success. A world in which our masks are merely representations of our turmoil, skulls from which the flesh have been rendered, shading the agony of our souls. Not to belabor the point, but the video, it just sort of icks me out is the thing. It treads a little close to Dementor territory for my taste. I just, I need to make that clear. Nobody will listen, but it, it's making it tough to walk to the ring. Stop. No, I'm just saying, at shows, I'm like a wreck. The twisted wreckage of ladders and chairs taking years off of... Okay, so those things suck your soul out. And I don't know if you've been on the ride at Universal Studios, but they're the scariest part. Like, by a mile. You never noticed that? Miles of broken bodies in our wake, those gold belts will stay atop our shoulders for ages to come. And when the dust has settled, I'm not going back out there. When Armageddon has come and gone, they keep their belts. The authors will be. I have to draw the line somewhere. And Dementors is that line. That line is Dementors. My soul is staying right where it's always been. We're getting rid of those DVDs when we get back to the bus. A poem featuring Rick Bogner for some reason. We're Akum and Rezar. You know us as the authors of pain. And if there's one thing we hate, it would be the spelling of our names. Pain and name don't rhyme, you say. That's the least of our worries in this poem today. It's not pain we detest, nor authors we should note. It's that our dad misspelled our first ones like some hillbilly dolt. If Papa was Uncle Elmer or one of the Godwins, we'd understand. But as this is Paul Ellering's, it's therefore completely out of hand. He brought the world hawk and animal, and he spelled those right. Why did our names cause him to lose a literary fight? Akum should be Akum, we say. That's what we demand. Razor is razor. Gillette and Schick and Dollar Shave Club be damned. Scott Hall is calling now. Folks may think Razor is Ramon. Oh, no. And now on line two, we've got Rick Bogner on the phone. Okay, now we agree these horrible spellings we will live with. The last thing we want is a run-in with that beast named McDevitt. A slam poem. Words fall like opponents dropping from ladders, from ropes, from the arms of the authors. And like those we vanquish, we slam. The count of the ref goes one, two, three, and another chapter is written, each a part of an epic as we slam through those who we stand in our way as we slam DIY, as we slam the revival, as we slam your expectations, as we slam, 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 and yet we are not satisfied as we slam the door on which opportunity knocks open as we slam an unfortunate soul through a table as we slam these words fall like opponents dropping we slam a haiku about haku sometimes he is meng and i've never heard him sing he was also a king pain pain comes in many forms pain 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 Back pain when you bend. Thomas Paine is not your friend. Window pain can't defend. Pain air conditioners keep you cool. T pain hip hop trend, a traditional fool. Pain is the only god. Pain you feel. Break the pain, make it real. Pain in times that try men's souls. T pain with rhymes that are cold. Cold pain, air conditioning, millions sold. Pain, pain, pain. Pain. American Omega. American Alpha. Beautiful. We look at you from the dark while you shine in the light. You are the Alpha. You make us feel Omega. You wore sweet jackets while we wore dumb vests. Chad's long hair flowed while we couldn't grow. We tried Jason's cut, but pull it off? We do not. But still, your posters cover our lockers. 
hands under our gloves, nails painted black to match the feeling you make us feel, stare at you from across the ring, remind us what we lack. We're so cruddy next to you, like we were shocked by electric eels. Our manager is bald, no hair there, just like how you make us feel empty. We run out of the ring after we see you so quick to put on our eyeliner extra thick. We come from Albania and Canada. We try to touch you Americans with holds, but instead our hearts are in the hold of sad. Put us out of our American misalfery. Match over. Time to blast dashboard and think of how you make us scream in fidelities. Hands down, you are the bestest. Make us wish we knew a third dashboard song to make us feel better. Before I authored Pain, I was Sunny, me, the one writing this, Akum. But you make me feel cloudy, like super cloudy, the kind with thunderbolts and stuff. And hail, probably hail. My only hope, to meet you in the middle. Could we one day be the authors of Gamma? No, you are too alpha. Time to go cut our foreheads. For pain, not color. Bye. Missing piece of the puzzle. As the authors of pain dominate the scene, led by the vision of one Paul Ellering, together they form a modern wrestling dynasty. A piece is missing from achieving their true destiny. From the Legion of Doom, from the mean streets of Chicago, I don't mean Animal nor Hawk, I'm talking about Rocco. Leather jacket and pompadour, this dummy was not meek. He helped win SummerSlam 92 against Money, Inc. Please bring back the puppet. Make a painful royal flush. Akum, Razor, Ellering, Rocco. Oh, what a rush. Break legs and slam. We are Razor and Akum. We don't like other tag teams, man. These other teams, we hate their moves, we hate their slams, we hate their boots. We don't like other tag teams, man. We are Razor and Akum. We do not like them. They all suck. We beat them up. We run amok. We would fight them in the ring. We would fight them tagged with Sting. We would fight them in a shark cage match. Fine. We would fight them on the network for $9.99. We don't like other tag teams, man. We are Razor and Akum. We'd beat Sanity down and kick in their kidneys, then send TM61 packing straight back to Sydney. We'd twist heavy machinery in their fat knees, and we've never heard of Riddick Moss or Tino Sabatelli. But bring them on. We don't care. We'd fight them here. We'd fight them there. We would fight them with steel chairs. We would fight them with ring stairs. We would submit them until they gave up. We would fight them for the dusty classic cup. We don't like other tag teams, man. We are Rezar and Akum. Not what they seem. The crowd sings a song of mere perfection. We lift up our opponents and sink like a mirror's reflection. We lift with such power and might, knowing we are about to conclude the match of the night. Yet every time we seem so sure, the pop will be massive when they hit the floor. The fans' emotions running hot and wild, but every time we touch, I feel the fire go mild. What should have been a double power bomb was the perfect finish gone wrong. We are thankful for the fans and their sympathy, even if they can't tell the difference between Akum and me. Though the boss might not find it so cute, this super collider, for botching this much will be our center divider. For what was a dream come true is a living nightmare, worse than being called Davari and Dilo if they were filled with hot air. We couldn't make it on the indie scene, for we don't do flips or wear masks to the ring. But we better learn front rolls or even cartwheels, for if Mr. McMahon fires us, we'd have to ration our meals. Oh, somebody help us get this execution correct, for the size of us can hardly protect. In a moment of clarity, I'm sure we'll be fine, for we show more charisma than any of DIY. Shall I compare thee to a summer's pain? Shall I compare thee to a summer's pain? Thou art more searing and more brutal. Rough winds do shake the full mustache of Wayne. A dude who gave me a deal on a U-Haul one time, he was cool. Sometimes too hot, the eye of Paul Ellering shines, and often his gold complexion dimmed, he needs a tan, and every powerbomb from powerbomb sometimes declines. 
By chance or cause, we drank too much last night, Coors Banquet. But thy eternal tag team championship shall not fade, nor lose possessions of that pain thou oust a spinning sidewalk slam. Nor shall American Alpha brag we wanderest in their shade, because, bro, we don't. So long as men can breathe, or super colliders collide, so long lives this and gives pain to thee, my sick style. Note from Paul. The following work, diary entry, has been included in this volume, completely unedited, so that you can see my authors of pain's raw writing talent in the same shining light that I do every time they send me the beginnings of a poem. Paul Ellering. Diary Entry Dear Diary, Today Mr. Paul Ellerting wants us to take flight from Louisville to St. Louis, but we are scared. Mr. Paul Ellerting says that we take off and land at Zackle same time. Mr. Paul Ellerting wants us to get in a machine of time. How do we travel time and not get scared? We beg and go to Starship Enterprise, rent our car, and Mr. Paul Ellerting gets our venual miniature. It has TV for us in seats back's pockets. Mr. Ellerting drives to St. Louis, and we view watch Vegetable Tales. We like because it is good one about brush hair missing. So sad. We miss brush hair times. Mr. Paul Ellerting is sad, too. We can tell. Mr. Nipple H. Say, we mind him of Warrior Roadsters, so he give us Mr. Paul Ellering to help us. We happy Mr. Nipple H. Thinks so nice, nice of us that he give us Mr. Paul Ellerting to help us and be nice, nice. Mr. Nipple H. and Mr. Paul Ellerting see big thing for us. We like big thing. We big, so we know we need big things for us. Like vanual miniature with TV and seats back's pockets. Brush hair found. They say we make money. They say fame fame. They so say change change. We change change. But (laughs) we won't make money. We want fame fame. So we change change. Mr. Paul Ayrton wants us to call each other by our names. Sleep in separate beds and stop using our special language. We will start tomorrow. We are scared. My camps are her sarnamola, silk and her hungish ham, but the sea brought a abnook, snare for verful ships brought a abnook. We are the authors of pain. We will make you feel our pain. Our pain is legion. Now, Akumin Rezar, AOP. An ode to Ellering. We authors of pain wouldn't have much at all. If it wasn't for our cantankerous manager, Paul, we'd still be off TV muddling about if it wasn't for Paul Ellering helping us out. We're just two big dudes, a mean power pack, bodies so thick we cannot reach the small of our back. Even though we are strong, tough, and are tall, our key to success is our Uncle Paul. We only need to pose while Uncle Paul talks because our verbiage lacks, unlike animal and hawks. He labeled us Akum and Rezar to make us sound smart. But truly, it's because people couldn't tell us apart. Wearing his slick leather jacket, Wall Street Journal in his hands. He cheers us on and makes fun of the marks in the stands. He overlooks every contract we sign and its rider. While in our matches, we just try to hit our super collider. As a trio, we are the best we can be. Taking down all the tag teams in NXT. American Alpha was dominated, the revival right after. We broke down hashtag DIY with our last chapter. We beat them, hurt them, leaving them to their fates. All while getting the gold strapped around our thick-bellied waists. While we authors wrote the best tag team career of them all, it would never have been published without our editor, Paul. Palindrome Advice After our bartending buddy Eddie Nett's bachelor party, he was still drunk the morning of his wedding. We had to wrestle him down and submit him until he sobered up. Afterwards, we wrote him this palindrome. Pure Boston Crab for Adnet, a tender of bar, could not sober up. Pain. The end. Paul Ellering, our wrestling dad, said, American Alpha sucks real bad. If you attack them at the end, NXT tag teams will fear you, my friend. The best of the last. We found it apropos to dedicate the last chapter to, well, 
the last chapter. In order to understand where our finisher came from, we must go back in time. This story begins when I, Akum, was 13 years old. I was given a reading assignment in school. I picked a novel that had been on the bookshelf of my childhood home since before I was born. The Old Man and the Sea, one of Hemingway's finest. After I had finished and turned in my paper to Mrs. Farrington, I quickly realized that the book was not finished with me. I would think constantly about Santiago's struggle. I read the book cover to cover over and over again. But as I neared the last chapter, I knew that the outcome would always be the same. I had wished that I had never finished the book so that the story would never end. So, from then on, I would always read a book, ending it just before the final chapter. This became my standard practice to this day. After a year of teaming together, I came into the locker room one day and found Rezar having just finished reading Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. He told me that he was done with the book, but I had noticed that his bookmark was still on the last chapter. It was then that I found out that we shared the same policy on the last chapter. I, Rezar, had too been saddened by the close of a book. For me, it was... The importance of being earnest when I was 10. This similar experience bound us closer than any tag team could be. We talked about our feelings and the stories we both read and never finished. It was then that we both shared with each other a secret that neither of us had ever told another living soul about. Something was missing. A book needed a last chapter, whether it was written, read, or acted out. It was then that we decided the last chapter will always be ours. Since that day, we will read an entire book up to the last chapter right before a match. That way, the last chapter will always end up right where it belongs, in the ring. The last chapter. This poem is just a picture of them doing their finisher, the last chapter, which doesn't translate very well to the audio medium. Acknowledgements. We could not have written this book without the WWE naming us the authors of Pain and therefore obligating us to write a book called Pain. Our manager slash dad, Paul Ellering and Road Warrior Animal for letting us touch his cool red shoulder pads once. All poems were written by Akum and Rezar with help from the following. Forward, Joey Clift. I Cry When Daddy Calls Me Hawk, Michael Rose. Alan Ginsberg's Howl by the Authors of Pain. Matthew Brian Cohen. Authors of Pain, co-authors in life, Michael Rose. Akum's Razar, Colin Hunter, satirist-in-chief, kayfabenews.com. Virginia Woolf had a great finisher, Taylor Orsi. Red Thighs, Dino Winwood. Big Trophy, Stephen Lowe. Haiku from the Road, Stephen Lowe. WWE Crash Cage Playset, James Hornsby. My Vest Has Many Pockets, Jesse Arlen Klein. Channeling My Inner Conflict, Tyler Davidson. A poem featuring Rick Bogner for some reason, R.D. Reynolds, RussellCrap.com. A slam poem, Jason Wayne Christian. A haiku about haku, Matt McCarthy. Payne, Alex Newman. American Omega. Mike Rowe, Missing Piece of the Puzzle. Gene Augusto. Break Legs and Slam, Alex Hoffman. Not What They Seem, Dino Winwood. Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Pain? Taylor Orsi, Diary Entry, Brian James O'Connell, An Ode to Ellering, Eric W. Barnes, Palindrome Advice, Joseph Porter, Payne, The End, Nikki Urban, The Best of the Last, Daniel Weiss, Special Thanks to Alex Hoffman, Brian Rubinow, Amanda Meadows, and Jeffrey Golden, The Nice Lady That Makes Our Big Scary Vests, Heidenreich, and Colt Cabana for reading our audio book. About the Authors Akum is a Walt Whitman award-winning poet and 2011 Harvard Rhodes Scholar. An avid Mark Twain enthusiast, Akum owns autographed first editions of many of Twain's most popular works. When he isn't writing, he wrestles in a tag team with his brother Rezar for WWE's NXT brand, where they hold the company's top title. He and Akum are currently writing their next book, The Book of Dominance, which will be on store shelves in the near future. Rezar's love of poetry began in his teenage years 
when he spent a summer lifting weights and reading the complete works of Emily Dickinson. He can't wait to wrestle on WWE's main roster, where he hopes to learn from his literary hero, Braun Strowman. Thanks, everybody. This was the audiobook for Pain by the Authors of Pain. You can download a free PDF of Pain by the Authors of Pain at supercolliderpress.com. Of course, I'm Colt Cabana, the host of the Art of Wrestling podcast, available at coltcabana.com and wherever you get your podcasts from. If you're into downloading stuff, you can get my three documentaries about life as an independent wrestler at coltmerch.com or digitalcult.com. And if you're into books, I just put out a children's book with Erica Weiss. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or coltcabana.com, where I will ship it to you from my apartment. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at coltcabana. And for being a wrestling fan, to you, I say... Thanks. Boom boom, Coca Banana. Boom boom, Coca Banana. Boom boom, Coca Banana. It's Coca Banana. <laughs>